Hey everyone, welcome back to part 3. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created the textures or the materials in Substance Painter. So at the minute, I'm just doing a turntable to show you guys what the final result looks like. There's obviously a, a lot more I could have done with it or different directions I could have gone with the texturing. But overall, I was quite pleased with the end result and due to the size of the model in engine, being quite small, I think this came out pretty well. The first thing I did to start the texturing process was actually apply a default metal material to the model. That was just to get an idea of lighting within the environment, because Substance has its own skybox system. So with the lighting at a level I actually liked, or basically just the default level, what I did was bake down the texture maps. So even though I didn't have a high poly mesh, I used itself. That way I could get an ambient occlusion map, a curvature map out of it as well. It also provided a normal position thickness and world space maps. These were all really useful for using Substance Paint as smart materials as most of the stuff that I actually did in this was apply them and then control them through opacity and layers and then just tweaking the settings in there. Throughout the project I very I actually didn't make any custom custom materials. I think I downloaded one which was the heated metal on the end of the blade which I'll show you later but for now all I'm doing is actually selecting the faces and then applying meshes or applying materials to the mesh using a mask that way I could block certain aspects off and texture certain things individually while keeping the colors on their own layers this is actually the first project that I've used Substance Painter for for a long time I used it a couple of years back for some assets and objects and stuff like that but it's been so long that I actually forgot how to use part of it. This is why here I'm actually going through selecting the faces so I can texture them individually. What I realized I could do after this point was go back into Blender and bake out a color map. That way I could have just used the colors that already existed on the texture that we placed there and brought them into Substance Painter and then I could have used a color picker to to select them that way I wouldn't have had to go through and select each face individually I've done it now so I can only really learn by what I've the mistakes that I made but hopefully you guys won't have that mistake and if you are following along you should be okay to go Again here, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just selecting faces and then using a mask to apply the material to them. There's, at this point I didn't really go into much detail as I just want to get the block color in place. That way I could see how it would look and once we start adding dirt to the mesh or some finer details, we've got a little bit more control over it since everything's already in place and the layers are in the correct position. It's around this point in the process that I was actually happy with the base materials I applied and now started to look into making it look more worn and broken up. To do this, I actually just used a leather material, I believe it was, because it stood out enough from the clean silvers or the clean metals. It allowed me to view the breakup a lot easier as well as the roughness channels. And you can see here, it actually looked pretty good. But because I was going for a clean lightsaber, like a new manufactured one, I actually reduced this down quite a bit to make it not so harsh.
Substance paint as smart materials are so useful for being able to get that detail across, especially with saving time. But I realized here I was having some issues because my ambient occlusion map didn't bake on the first pass. And after some playing around with it, I found out that my uh, substance painter was using ray traced GPU calculations, I think it is. And that was causing an issue where ambient occlusion maps wouldn't bake down. So this took me a little while to figure out, but once I had, it made a big difference to the project and just brought that little bit of life to it, especially where it was in shaded areas and you just wanted that little bit more detail. So here you can see where I'm actually changing the settings to allow for AO bakes. The reason this part was so slow is because I'm actually texturing a 2048 by 2048. I know the Oculus Quest can't really handle this, even though I do use this texture in the final preview that you probably saw at the intro, but it actually worked really well and I was really happy with the quality that the AO map added to it. It didn't seem like much, but just having that shading in hard to reach places in the little nooks, it just brought the saber to life a little bit more. At this point in the model, I actually wanted to bring in that heat effect. I could create one, but I wanted to see if Substance Source had one available just to save that little bit of time. And it actually turns out they did, which was extremely useful and so helpful as it probably saved me quite a few hours at this stage. So it's actually super easy to implement. All I did was download from Substance Source and it automatically went into my Substance Painter library. And from there, I just selected the meshes, or at least the faces that I wanted to apply the material to with a mask. And then I brought that material directly onto it where I could actually use the parameters built into it to control the intensity and the detail that was part of it. With the heat effect in the location that I liked, I started playing around with the different colors and the settings that were built into it. But unfortunately, I wasn't really happy with them as I kind of just broke it. But it was, it was really nice to be able to experiment with it and see the different kinds of effects that I could make. Because if I do a future project, then I then, I then know how, how it works and where I could use it. At this stage in the model, I realized I was actually quite pleased with the result that I had so far. So rather than changing the main colors and the effects that was there, I started to look at wear and, like wear and tear and how I could add them to the model without making it too intense. So you can see here I had a smart material, I believe it is, which made it just look beat up and worn to hell. But with the shiny metal, it didn't really work too well. So I tried playing around with this and bringing it down a little bit. But then I believe I just used the roughness channel. That way I could make it less shiny in certain areas and just make that little bit of detail that you might glimpse, but you wouldn't really see if you were to look for it properly. At this point in the build, I wanted to work back on the top of the, the guard area and actually try and bring in more detail to that. So I bring in, I think it's like a burnt 
ground dirt or something like material and then actually just apply that to the inside faces because the idea was that I could make that black and do it as though the inside of this guard was burnt and charred that way it would sell the effect of the, the heated up metal on the outside I think this worked really well in the end but I probably could have done a little bit more with it to get that effect across as I think it was quite flat At this point in the process, I kind of had an idea that I was almost finished, but for some reason I decided to just play around with some features in Substance. So I added this like red leather. The idea was I could have made like bloody or something like that. And I tried using the particle effects within Painter to get these smoke wisps on the inside, but I didn't really like how it turned out. And I felt like I was getting to the point where I was about to ruin the model if I kept working on it. So to to stop that, I stopped working on it and I pretty much called it here. So at this point in the process, I think I've been working on the lightsaber's textures for about an hour or two. And I actually realized that I had missing faces on the guard. So I had to jump back over into Blender fix like add them in and then unwrap them again while bringing it back into substance painter without modifying any of the other uvs it's actually worked really well and you can't really tell from the end result that they were missing apart from some minor tweaks here and there at this point i pretty much wrapped up and that was it like if you're new to this and you want to jump right in and get started Substance Painter is so easy for you to, to get into. It's, imagine Photoshop with drag and drop. You bring your materials in, you apply them, and then you're basically good to go. You can just add layers on top of that. So rather than ruining it, I actually stopped here, and then this is where I'm looking at making some renders, which you've probably seen already. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe, that way you won't miss any. We also have a Discord, so if you want any questions if you've got any questions about this and you want some help with Unreal or 3D in general, just drop in, we'll be able to give you a hand with it. But for now, I hope you enjoyed that. Until part four, where I add the blade, I hope you stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!